So guys, there is one of the questions people always asking me why I'm doing old cars. It's a used cars, not new, because I'm the guy with experience. I'm a used car dealer. I've been on the market more than 10 years and I know what's going on with those kind of cars because I'm constantly buying it. I'm not the kind of guy who's doing review on the new cars when you get in the car for one day or two hours and you can do nothing with that car. Just drive it around a little bit. Just do the short video and tell the people how good is that car. No, I'm not that kind of guy maybe yet but what i can tell you the car like that which was cost a lot of money seventy thousand almost dollars for the bmw x3 m right now is depreciated so much so a lot of people can afford it and maybe you the guy who buying this car right now or you might be bought it already so if you're gonna get the new car for seventy thousand, you're gonna drive it period of time. You're gonna get all that heat of the money because you either lease it or you finance it or you bought it cash. Doesn't matter. You paying from your pocket for that depreciation. How you paying that on your lease payments? Your lease payment on the BMW or Mercedes is gonna be much more than Toyota just because the depreciation of those cars going so much faster than Toyota or Honda. So and that kind of car. I want to show it to you today that's 2018 bmw x3 m40i it has 355 horsepower and brand new car it was priced at 66,420. and right now this car on the market you can find it about 25,000. and the main question what's going on with this car is it still good is it still worth that kind of money i think it is worth it and i'm going to show you right now why Shiny, shiny, plastic, black mirror fascist, obsessed capitalist, that you're feeling guilty Catholic, pretty, pretty, picturesque, Facebook status, happy family and happy marriage, like the magazine pages, superimposed with focus. So what's the difference between M and just regular X3? There is a lot of difference. I mean, the car itself, it's gonna look the same. There is the same size of the car. It is a small SUV, compact. It's beautiful, it's super nice, it's super practical you're gonna have a lot of space if you're gonna drop the seats but the m it's much nicer why because of rims because of brakes because of bumpers because of the headlights and a lot of different things like exhaust the engine has a little bit more horsepower the interior the seats itself and a lot of different things and especially those m everywhere in this car it's gonna give you much better feeling when you're driving bmw x3 m you can drive regular x3 and it's gonna be not that bad too, but to have the same price car, but M, for sure you're gonna feel much better like I'm feeling myself. And the BMW X3 M looks better on those rims because it's M rims. The bumper, it's a little bit slightly different and the chrome pieces, they are gray. How cool is that? It's cool. And as usual, BMW, and especially if it has M on that, it has a lot of different cool things. Like for example, this car it has 360 view camera. It is all wheel drive, 355 horsepower, sport mode, sport exhaust system. It has panoramic roof and all that kind of cool things. But the car itself looks super good and it drives great. There is no problem at all with this car. I cannot even feel the smell of the oil on this car yet. But again, there is a lot of common problems on the BMW and this car, it might gonna have a little bit more problems later on, like the spark plugs, like the oil, oil leak somewhere and it's gonna smell so bad so you don't want to do that you're probably gonna spend money on that so BMW constantly maybe gonna give you some problems like the oil level or misfiring or something else but it probably never gonna break down most of the BMW they started up you can drive it even if it's running rough the transmission kicking uh, the engine doing weird sound it might gonna break apart but it's not the car gonna keep going that's why I think in LA there is a lot of homeless people they drive in BMW full of shit inside but the car still drives that's the BMW about so BMW basically engineering they want your money on the part they don't want money on the car they want you to buy the parts from the dealer and do the service on time that's that's all they need and we're gonna open the hood we're gonna check the engine see what's going on that it's actually really cool under the engine and I'm gonna show you some cool things under the hood the one of the thing I'm gonna show it to you and you're gonna see yourself is this car been well maintained before or not is a previous owner been spending money on this car or not 
and it's super simple if you buy any BMW or Mercedes or any other car you have to take a look on that and it's not the tricky but again and I'm going to show to you how the people sometimes trying to trick the other people by cleaning that part let's see right now so the double click on the handle and your hood is going to be open and the first thing I'm going to check on this car actually two things one of them it's a coolant level i just want to make sure it's top it up full and it's not leaking because usually if it's going down means this car has a leak and it's good if it's just a pipe or maybe a radiator but if the coolant going inside the cylinders that might gonna be the huge problem and the simple thing to check on the bmw engine that's the oil cap oil filler cap so when you check in that you're supposed to see the sign there is original part number right there and i can see the roll related slovenia so it's made in slovenia there's a bmw part number 86553331 means i can read those numbers means the oil in this engine it's not sluggish yet so when the people not doing oil change i always talking about oil change because it's number one thing people not doing on the cars any kind of car doesn't matter chevy or it's a bmw mercedes they just simply don't want to do it because again on the bmw when you go into any oil change service and you're asking how much is going to be to change the oil and they tell you it's going to be about 220 230 before you used to pay 60 70 dollars on a regular oil change for toyota bmw a little bit more expensive and you're saying you know what i'm just going to add some oil i'm just going to keep driving so i think right now and what i can tell it's been <clears throat> what i can tell right now the oil being done on time on this car because usually by 80 000, it's supposed to be full of dirt so like a sluggage from the oil and again what's the people doing especially on the bmw and believe me or not i done it before on the old bmw i used to have uh, back in the days what i was doing i was just taking my old tube brush and cleaning that cap myself and it looks good because i knew the new owner whoever gonna come and check bmw they've been checking that because right now you cannot open the engine you cannot see what's going on but that's the simple thing you have to check and again bmw there is a common problem on the transmission so if you're gonna do the donuts or some any other crazy thing your transmission is gonna start kicking so basically valve body going bad the uh, oil burning inside transmission and it's gonna start kicking and the packages in the transmission for the gears they're gonna start burning so you're gonna feel a lot of different bad things going on the transmission besides the sound is gonna be kicking knocking or any other check engine light codes gonna come for the transmission problem so the question and kind of conclusion about the used bmw when you want to buy it how you can check it do you need a special guy bmw specialist who's gonna check it you probably do but you probably not the first thing you have to check simple things like coolant level your oil cap what's going on under the car it's so simple to go underneath and check it out what's going on is it full of oil like all the bmws or oh, it's super nice and clean that's number one if you see it's all good it's all clean you might gonna take it to some guy who can plug the obd scanner and check if there is any permanent or pending code so somebody reset the check engine light and you might gonna see some surprises later on after you're gonna drive it one or two days but uh, other than that if it sounds good the car is warm up really good so you can drive it around step on it a couple times you know step it hard on a gas and just feel the transmission if it's kicking or not if somebody's going to tell you you know it's good it's okay it's kicking a little bit no it's not the transmission not supposed to kick at all and the engine not supposed to do any weird sounds that's how you're going to buy used bmw in good condition there is a lot of different things for sure you have to check and again if you understand what's going on under the hood if you understand how the car works in general it's probably going to be more than enough actually this car this color looks so great i mean it was announced as a black but the car was super dirty and it was like a rainy day i bought it from san francisco and when the car came i was thinking that's probably bluish looks like bluish color but it is a carbon black metallic and it looks super good especially on those rims x3 looks just good so interior in this six years old bmw looks really good and it feels okay so all the stitches they own on the spot the nothing coming out nothing pops out yet the seats looks good all the form itself uh 
kept the same original and even on the side of the seat you know all these stitches they steal from the factory nobody ever touch it and somehow this car made more than 80,000 miles and the car in this condition I'm impressed honestly I'm super impressed what's going on on the back the bank seat it's not so comfortable maybe for the tall people but in general it's more than enough space I said before you can drop the back seat and you're gonna have plenty of spot uh, you're gonna have plenty of space inside your car it's super rare when I see BMW X3 with sun shades on the rear doors that's basically option for the BMW X5 X7 or maybe 7 series sometimes 5 series maybe it's common but I, honestly I never ever see the sun shades on the back doors on the BMW X3 but this car has it and see the door panel so if the car is black itself the leather on the door panels it's kind of bluish I think I think it is bluish supposed to be maybe or it's just grayish but those blue stitches everywhere looks so good and like I say on the back there is a climate control there is a heated seats and what else you need power outlet that's basically more than enough and panoramic roof on this car it's so huge when you open the sunshade on the panoramic roof even the back seats can enjoy whatever going on there either it's the sun or it's the stars and you're driving somewhere at night maybe in Yosemite Park because this car you can take it easily to Yosemite Park right now even there is a lot of snow because it's all-wheel drive it's a BMW X3 it's more than enough for any of your journey so my personal opinion BMW X3 it's one of the most beautiful and one of the most impressive SUV available on the market X5 it's kind of too big X1 it's kind of too small X3 it's a perfect I mean for the city family I've been driving in Florida last year I mean I took the kids for the trip and I got BMW X3 same exact car but not M for rent and I've been driving it for quite a while almost a week everywhere with the key it's a lot of stuff inside and I was impressed how cool this car works for me and now I'm driving this 2018 X3 M40i and it's kind of the same feeling that car it was facelifted and it's a little bit different not the same as this but the size of the car all the options and cool things it's about the same panoramic roof included so what I'm saying this car it's more available and kind of more desirable because the price for this car that's what I like to show you that's a window sticker that's a cool thing when the car used car has it so it's 2018 BMW X3 M40i and the MSRP for this car was 66,420 that's insane and there is a lot of packages included but what I don't understand $70,000 SUV BMW and that year those options they've been already available but we do not have a line keeper assistance number one we do not have a Distronic Plus that's number two and what really been a kind of uh, point for me I didn't get it we have a heads-up display on the dashboard but we don't have a blind spot assistance uh, that's really interesting and so basically this car was 66,420 and right now this car goes about 25,000 so five years later this car dropped the value about one third no more than a half so I would say about what is it 60 percent 70 percent yeah it has some miles like 89,000 miles on the car so the car drives great still uh, there is no so there is no major problem with this car right now and I cannot smell the oil because the most of the time when you're driving BMW and it's over 50,000 miles you're gonna smell oil all the time so there is a famous joke like if you have a BMW and it's parked on your driveway and when you going out 
you move in your car and there is no oil spots under the car means it's not BMW. So everybody kind of agree and acceptable, I would say so, for the BMW owners. When you drive in BMW and it's slightly used or it's used, it's going to smell uh, burning oil. You're going to add oil and every most of the BMW owners, they do have a one quarter or two quarter of oil sitting in the trunk just in case. But this just in case kind of constantly. So you drive in turbo BMW, especially on a that mileage. So you're going to step on the gas a couple of times. You're going to put it on a sport mode and you're going to see the message on your dashboard. Check oil level. What that means means BMW burning oil sometimes a lot, sometimes not. So this car we have, it's a straight six uh, twin turbo engine has 355 horsepower it's more than enough for this car my Maserati Levante has 440 404 so not not the huge difference but on this car it's super enough same time we can switch it on uh, eco mode and it's gonna be much nicer and much better on the gas so it's kind of super rare for me when you get in the used car and you might gonna get the window sticker for the same car so like i say the price for this car used to be sixty-six thousand and four hundred. and this car like i was saying before the win start from number five means the car was fully assembled in united states spartanburg south carolina right and the parts came from austria germany and some of that somewhere else but what's interesting about this car we have a package so there is a premium package and executive package so what we got we got a heads up display we got a 360 view camera and we got an active park distance control but what we don't have again there is no line keeper assistance there is no uh Distronic plus and some of the options uh, I want to show it to you on a menu, on a display, the way it works on the BMW. And I think 2018, it's a new body of this, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And basically a lot of technology like a touchscreen, the mid touchscreen. Uh, the new BMW got it from this one. 7 Series BMW came in 2016. So maybe I'm mistaken about new body for 2018. But anyway, there is a heads up display. Uh, there is a heated steering wheel that's really nice cool option especially for california we have a parking assistant plus we have a 360 camera we have a phone charger finally bmw made it right there in the center in the mid we don't have a usb-c ports yet just regular usb and the cool things there is a lot of cool things in the bmw x3 especially m one of them that's the cluster so basically right now i have a cluster set on a echo mode and when i'm on the echo mode i have that mpg uh, narrow going left and right and it shows me what's the gas it's actually going by mileage how many miles i saved by driving on the echo mode before i'm gonna fill it out again and right now it shows almost one mile so the speed limit goes to 80 miles per hour more this car doesn't want to go on a echo mode so basically it's trying to save you money so as soon as we go into sport mode we're gonna see the kind of aggressive looking cluster and there is a rpm and the speed goes to 160 miles an hour that's cool but the way i'm driving it and it's on a comfort mode i'm not the sport guy i'm not the bmw m to drive on a sport mode all the time so the interesting thing about this car that's the camera and what i don't understand in this camera the way they made it so basically if i want to see 360 the car itself I have to go here and play with the screen like why I mean it is a cool option it's super cool option it also shows you which door is open right now and what's going on 
So you can see it on the screen, that's a blind spot where the door is open. Other than that, it's a useless option, but it's super cool to play like a Sony PlayStation inside the car. So the main cool point about the multimedia, it's a touch screen. So basically whatever you're trying to do, go to navigation or change channel on your radio, you can do it by putting the finger. That's practical, I would say so. The sound system on this car is a Harman Kardon and it's cool. It's always BMW, I think, has one of the best sound system uh, and especially on the M package or any other cool expensive BMW, they doing the best, the best is possible. So one of the cool options on this car, that's the cluster. And basically when you're driving on a comfort mode, your cluster is just a regular. But when you go into sport mode, you're gonna have that kind of looking cluster. Plus on top of that, you can go on a dynamic settings. You can go plus, you can go individual and do the configuration. What do you wanna know? What do you wanna do with that individual? Like see there is a, for the engine, for transmission, for the steering and on and on and on. I'm not a big fan to do that kind of settings. I just like to drive it on a comfort mode. On the top of that, we do have an adaptive. Ты хочешь, да, здесь все. So all the used cars, they do have a previous huge history and sometimes it's super interesting. And I think the owner of this car was a super interesting guy or lady because number one, the car was full of dog hair. Number two, this car has a trail hitch and trail hitch it's not only for the bicycle basically bicycle they do have a small size of trail hitch this one just regular and we have that things for the chains from the trailer so basically this car used to have a trailer on the back and looks like suspension maybe it was replaced or it was not so heavy trailer but to see that on a BMW X3 or X5, especially if it's M, it's a super kind of weird for me. But again, you never know. Every single car has its own history, previous history, and you never know what's happened before. But you are fully responsible for the car, what's gonna happen later on with that if you buy the used one. So basically buying a used car, check it out as much as you can. If you cannot do that yourself, ask someone better ask the shop and pay them money to get report from them because in case of something you always can ask not your friend but the shop who you got paid for that and good luck